What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films back with another video and about a month ago when the Sony FX30 was announced I said on one of my videos that you can use the FX30 as a main cam for wedding filmmaking, for corporate, for whatever videography project you have you can certainly use the FX30 as your main camera you could even buy three of them and have an A, B, C camera setup and on a relatively low budget then I thought if I'm going to say that I better do it myself so I put my money where my mouth is and filmed an entire wedding using the FX30 as the main camera and I used my A7S III and FX3 as the B and C cameras. Here's a 24 hour sneak peek trailer. have it. The FX30 performed as expected of a camera in 2022. Just a couple of things to note when you use the FX30 as your main camera compared to the FX3 or Sony a7S3 is that oh my god you look like trash. Now I don't got time for this today. If you want to look the bad, if you want to look professional, you need to wear hot clothing. What are you talking about? Let me show you. A war winning. Bro, this fits nice, man. Comfortable, nice quality stitching, versatile fabric. It do, but it make in Vietnam. My cousin Dak my bit sew it. But to be honest, it's a bit cold out here. My nips are tack sharp. You think you could hook me up with a jacket or something? No, man. It expensive. You not Peter McCannon. Can you at least give me a discount or something? Let me show you. It the coupon code for 15% off the cow. Go to cutclothing.com and you let me show you. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Look good, feel good, film good. You look professional, but you still trap. Cut you shoot Sony. You need to shoot Canon because Canon have the bad color shine. Well, that was neither here nor there. I uh, feel like a true tube doucher now after all that. But uh, let's get back to the FX30 and me using it for a run and gun wedding filmmaking. Yeah, so one thing you have to know about the FX30 is that it is not going to be as good as low light as the A7S III or FX3 or FX6 and that's a given because there's no other camera that even comes close to that. This FX30 is actually above average in terms of low light capabilities, you know, compared to other cameras. So the notion that you cannot run and gun the FX30 in low light situations, uh, weddings, things of that nature, is complete bullshit because there's dudes filming amazing wedding films using the uh, Fujifilm system. There's dudes using Black Magic. There's dudes using GH5, GH6 with wedding films. Those films are fantastic. Not all professional filmmakers exist on YouTube, if you didn't know that already. The best ones, the ones you should really be getting advice from, probably aren't even on YouTube. Unfortunately, on YouTube, there's just a lot of BS information. There is dudes who just did like an ad read like I did a minute ago. It is full of dudes trying to make some money. I'm not saying tube douchers are like dishonest. I'm not saying tube douchers aren't talented. I'm not saying tube douchers don't know what they're doing. Just sometimes they might not understand things fully and then say things that aren't necessarily accurate, such as the FX30 2500 ISO is not a dual base ISO from Sony. Some people even say that Sony lied about it, which is complete bullshit as well. The fact of the matter is, the FX30 does have a dual sensitivity ISO. It's 800 on the low base and 2500 on the high base. Yes, the 2500 is noisier than the 800. Matter of fact, the 2500 ISO is actually noisier than ISO 2000. 
But I don't think a lot of people realize is when you're in flex ISO or pretty much that regular S-Log3 mode in your A7S III where you could just go through all the ISO values as needed and the camera does all of the necessary electronic sensitivity adjustments for you, pull the file out of the camera, the footage is exposed perfectly, everything looks the way you saw it when you filmed it on your display. And people don't realize that the camera actually adds in noise reduction. There's noise reduction built into all of those different ISO values. That is not the base ISOs. In this case, any ISO between 800 and 2500 on the FX30 has a lot of noise reduction in it built into the camera and the camera delivers to you like that. And then of course, once you get 2500, it is naturally a bit noisier than 2000 ISO. When you start adjusting the footage in post, let's say you bump up the exposure, you bring down the highlights, you bring up the shadows, you will see that the 2500 ISO footage retains the information very similarly to the 800 ISO, where the 2000 ISO footage falls apart. When Tony says a low base ISO footage of 800 is similar to the high base ISO of 2500, they mean that when you adjust the footage, you could see that the noise of 2500 and 800 is actually quite similar after you do adjustments to your highlights and your shadows in post versus all the other ISO values cannot keep up with those two base ISOs. The, the low base and the high base ISOs aren't supposed to look identical. The low base ISO and all these cameras, A7S III, FX3, FX30, will always be cleaner than the high base. If you take your FX3 or your Sony A7S III, take, you test the 640 or 800 ISO, depending on which camera you're using, and you compare it to the 12,800 of the A7S III FX3, you'll see that the 800 or the 640 low base ISO is cleaner, period. It is definitely cleaner than the 12,800. The reason why a lot of people think like 12,800 is like this magical high base ISO is because it's probably a huge difference between 10,000 ISO and 12,800 ISO. So knowing what to do, knowing what to expect out of these cameras is what will help you be more successful using them. The FX30 is in no doubt a great camera for pretty much any type of filmmaking in my opinion. Um, run and gun even more so because it's small, it's light. It's Super 35 so you could use Super 35 lenses which is a lot smaller and lighter than full frame uh, lenses. The only thing is, you just gotta make sure that you're always using a prime lens because in my opinion, like, I don't even like f2.8, f4 that much in full frame. Um, I mean, so f2.8, f4 on Super 35 will definitely not cut it for me. But, so I always choose to use prime glass, at least f1.8, f1.4 glass for any Super 35 camera I use and especially the FX30. And for this wedding film, for wedding films, I normally use, I gotta switch locations, guys. Obviously for every wedding film before this one, I've been using my FX3 or my Sony A7S III and I always use a 50mm f1.4 throughout the day. For prep, I use a 35. So for Super 35, obviously I have to do some math and for those of you who are not Asian and don't know how to do math, pretty much you just got to multiply the lenses, you just got to multiply the focal length value by 1.5 to get like a similar focal length with your APS-C camera compared to your full frame camera. So if I usually shoot 35mm during prep, with the Sony A7S III or FX3, I just use a 24 mil during prep handheld for the FX30 because 24 times 1.5 is close to 35 millimeters. And the same thing goes for like the rest of the day. Instead of using a 50, I use a 35 millimeter lens and then you multiply that by 1.5 and you get like close to 50, 52 millimeter. So that's what I did. So during prep, 24 millimeter handheld, which is looks like a 35 mil full frame and then during the rest of the day, I shot on 35mm f1.4 G master lens on my DJI RS3. And of course, that would look like a 50mm lens on a full frame camera. And that's what I did. And overall, it worked fantastic. I have no complaints with the Sony FX30 throughout the wedding shoot. There was some sketchy moments when uh, the couple did a Korean ceremony and that place is really dark. We tried to light it as best as we could, but if we had like direct light going through the uh, crowd, there would be a lot of shadows and it was not good for us or the photographer. So we tried our best to bounce the light off the ceiling. Um, you know, we used Aperture 60X and we just like blasted 100% uh, from an angle. It just wasn't giving us enough light. So there was a point when I was like kind of sketched out like, oh, I don't know if this 2500 ISO is gonna cut it here. 
but I left it at 2500 and you know when I went to post I was able to raise the high I was able to raise the exposure quite a bit and it looked fine it looked good it looked good it looked usable and I was okay with that and of course there's always neat video there's always Topaz AI that you can use there's other software you use to like remove noise make images look cleaner and crispier after in post and so that's also an option for you if you don't want any noise or you want like super super clean footage so with that in mind if you take if you think about let's say you got the $1800 FX30 and you got yourself neat video for I guess like $200 or you get Topaz I think it's $200 you spend $2000 and essentially you kind of get the same noise performance as the A7S3 or FX30 which costs over $3500 so that's another thing you gotta think about. I'm not sit here. I'm not sitting here and telling you that I'm switching from my Sony A7S III and FX3 to the FX30. I'm still gonna use my FX3 and A7S III's primarily when I'm filming. It's just I wanted to prove a point that you can still use FX30 as a main camera. At the same time, I have to admit, 12,800 ISO high base does make things a lot more convenient, a lot less worry about stuff. You know that you get clean footage just right out of camera, regardless. Yeah, and of course the FX3 A7S3 does have slightly better dynamic range than the FX30. It might be not be noticeable for the average person. I've also heard some people say the FX30 shouldn't be used in run and gun weddings where you're not lighting the indoor scenes, which is also complete bullshit because there's no run and gun wedding situation where you shouldn't be lighting the indoor scenes. If there's not enough lighting coming through the windows, you should light your indoor weddings or events you should have some type of lighting on the side not direct lighting on the camera because it looks really bad just you set up a light stand you get some light not necessarily to like super expose the scene but just to get some contrast just get some light in the scene to make your footage look not to make your footage not look like complete trash complete rubbish you know you always have to you have to plan for these things and lighting this these days you could get so many different small lighting systems so many portable um light stands where you could literally run around and place these light stands anywhere those light and all these lights have like batteries and they're all strong and they all have bicolor and they're all 100 bucks like it's not even that serious regardless of what camera you're using you should always try to light the scene because at the end of the day the best camera low light you could possibly have you could have a freaking night vision camera you go in and shoot a scene, an indoor scene, without proper lighting, it's gonna look like trash. I would rather take, I would, I would rather take a slightly noisier footage with better lighting than a, a footage with crappy lighting with less noise. It's plain and simple. You can watch movies, TV shows, there's a bunch of digital grain, there's a bunch of grain added to the footage and it looks perfectly fine. It, it look, you know, it looks the way it's supposed to look. And the reason why it looks good is because of lighting. Always light your scene. With that said, guys, I hope I answered the question. Can you use the FX30 as your main camera for event running gun shooting? 100%, without a doubt, the FX30 is a beast. I've clearly used it, and it comes highly recommended for anyone. I mean, obviously, if you already have X, FX3, A7S3, the FX30 could be used for your B or C cam. And if you're just starting off, or you're trying, you're, you have an A7 III, right? And you don't and if you're just starting off or you don't have a a camera that uh has 10 bit 4k 60 422 etc uh, say you have a7 III or you have one of the older sony aps-c uh cameras and you're looking to upgrade and you don't want to spend like a whole ton of money because either you just don't feel like it or you're just trying to you know start to get into it whatever it is fx30 man it's the way to go 1800 bucks aps aps-c lenses are very cheap so many different e-mount options and I'll be doing a video on what lenses I recommend for the FX30 really soon so if you want to see that please subscribe to the channel I hope this video has been helpful I hope it's been insightful please like it share it whatever and of course subscribe to the channel till next time lighten up I lightened up a little bit too much today man this freaking sun is beating up my face but I just want to get this thing over with man I'm sorry Sorry for this crappy situation. It's not really good. It didn't look good. My eyes are burning. Peace out. Oh my god, you look like trash. I don't got time for this today. If you want to look the bad, if you want to look professional, you need to wear hot clothing. What are you talking about? Let me show you.
award winning. Bro, this fits nice, man. Comfortable, nice quality stitching, versatile fabric. It the bed it make in Vietnam. My cousin Dak my bit sew it. To be honest, it's a bit cold out here. My nips are tack sharp. Think you could hook me up with a jacket or something? No, man. It expensive. You not Peter McCannon. Can you at least give me a discount or something? Let me show you. It the coupon code for 15% off this cow. Go to cutclothing.com and you let me show you. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Look good, feel good, film good. You look professional, but you still trash. 